I'm Diana DeRosa, and I am speaking with Ross Petticord, and he is the director of the Maryland Horse Industry Board, and Racing the Times is all about the horses in Maryland. What a great film, Ross. First of all, talk about the film a little bit, because it really showcases how much horses mean to Maryland and how wide the scope is. Well, it was certainly a labor of love by the filmmakers, Drew Perkins and Nick Carter. And they made this film maybe five years ago. This was during the uh, American Pharaoh era of the sweeping the Triple Crown and everything was on uh, an upbeat and, uh, and particularly in Maryland as well. So um, we have such a proud history here of thoroughbred racing and breeding. It literally goes back to the 1700s when we had royal governors from England here and they brought over racehorses from the King's Court in Hampton, Hampton Court. And so this film traces that legacy and um, through all the years and uh, it's literally one big sweeping melodrama, uh, if you will, that's uh, the arc of uh, its ups and downs and how the Preakness Trophy was hid during the Civil War and buried in Kentucky and then brought back and then how the Preakness started, but then the Preakness went to New York for like nine years in the early part of the 1900s and finally came back here. So all the ups and downs and through it all, Marylanders love of horses and racing has prevailed. And that's the, uh, the whole arc of the film, if you, if you wish so to say. So, you know, I love being able to see the racing, but I also loved being able to see the fact that people with disabilities and eventing, and there were so many different topics that were covered. And when you think about Maryland, what do you think it is that attracts so much interest in horses there of every type and style and size and you name it? I really think, and thinking about it, it goes back to when f horses first came here, uh, when they were settled and uh, the colony was settled in 1630. And I think the first horses came in 1650 and the first race horses in the 1700s. But, uh, you know, they've been used in war and transport and really uh, founding this whole country in the state of Maryland. And it's just something that really is ingrained in the culture of Marylanders and all over the state. And it's a, it's a small state and we were settled by English horsemen, by the Cavaliers, so it was Virginia. Uh, you know, New England had the Puritans and then the Dutch and the Quakers were in Pennsylvania, New York, but these were horsemen that came here and we had, and delving back in the history in the 1700s, about 80 racetracks. Every little village or every little town had a racetrack. Um, county fairs everywhere had racing. You know, uh, farmers had packs of hounds here. I mean, heck, when I grew up, my dad on a dairy farm had his own pack of foxhounds. And that was <laughs> at least 60 years ago. <laughs> I mean, so it's something that's, um, just ingrained in the culture and, it, and it, it truly is. We have 40 different breeds of horses here in about 35 different disciplines. Everything from the racing to Western barrel racing and the dressage and the polo and the fox hunting and the steeplechasing of course and it just goes on and on. Just about everything is here. And, um, and we're big on preserving farmland here and that's mainly with the fox hunting and with 50 or 60,000 acres of preserved land um, just for fox hunting purposes and a little state. So, and then we have almost 800 riding schools. I mean, that we license at the Horse Industry Board. And so there's a constant uh, churn of new people coming in, going to the riding schools, uh, of course, children, and, uh, but also adults. And, um, and we have 2,000 miles of public access riding trails and 30 trail riding stables. And there's just a lot of opportunity here. And it's pervasive all over the state from down at the ocean where we have the acid ponies 
all the way to, of course, the racetracks in the middle of the state and, and the uh, Baltimore, Washington area. And then out in the mountains, we have some big trail riding stables where people can ride in the mountains on, you know, rent a horse and, um, and, and do that. So, and there used to be racetracks out in the Western part of the state and um, no longer, but we had a big half mile racetrack culture here of about eight different racetracks and they were spread all over the state. So it's just been pervasive for centuries really and it's just it's like our watermen and the culture of the chesapeake bay the horses are ingrained here really are and, you okay. know. <laughs> and i also think that the maryland horse industry and its board and its members really do help to create all of that interest as well so i'd like to know a little bit about what the board does to promote what, what the organization does to promote horses in Maryland. Sure, we see our role and this is where the film came in and supporting the film. It was principally financed you know, by the horse racing industry here, but we see our role as bringing new people in. So we do something called horse, horse land at the Maryland State Fair. Yeah. We had 70,000 people. Of course, we didn't have it this year because of COVID. And, but previous, the year previous, we've had it five or six years. We have all sorts of demonstration. Kids can dress up as jockeys and, and you know, get on a, a mechanical horse. Um, they can learn how to bet. People of all ages, of course, we have racing at the state fair. Um, I think we're the only state fair this side of the Mississippi that actually has live thoroughbred horse racing. And, um, uh, and then they can pet horses. We make stick horses. They have little jumping courses. And literally, that's like 70,000 people that have come through that tent. And we have maybe 300 volunteers going in and out. It runs over 11 days. So it's very intense. And so Horseland is one thing that we do. Um, we do, uh, of course, promoting these films. We've had a couple, well, we've had several films in the Equus Film Festival. Um, uh, Doug Maddox has had uh, one film, uh, Christmas Ranch, that was filmed here in Maryland. We helped support that, and that was an Equus Film Festival winner, and he's come up with another one now. Um, that's going to be shown, I think, this year, Hope's Legacy. Um, uh, we do a lot of outreach at fairs and festivals with different um, that we support on the Eastern Shore, Day of the Horse, um, uh, Celebration of the Horse, and all sorts of activities. We have 38 horse discovery centers in 18 different counties. We only have 23 counties in Maryland. We're very small. And um, these discovery centers are volunteer efforts of already licensed stables that meet all of the requirements, but they're very willing to open their farms up to the public. They have open barns, which are like open houses. Some of them have 400, 500 people come to their open barns. And um, it's just a big introductory way. Um, we have one petting farm that is licensed with us and is a discovery center that gives 35,000 pony rides every year. <laughs> and, and that's the first step, you know, and then there's material there where they can take it if they want and, you know, go to local riding stables and ride. So we do a lot of promotion. Um, it's mostly grassroots and I guess you would call it guerrilla marketing uh, that we do. We don't have a large marketing budget. So we're very hands-on uh, with that. And um, we went to Sweden, we took a trip to Sweden a few years ago and horseback riding and riding over there is the second biggest sport in the country next to soccer. And the folks there were telling us uh, they have about 900 licensed stables in all of Sweden. We have about 800 in Maryland and we have about two thirds of the population that they do. So there were, there were a lot of um, synergies between the two places, but they were saying they had spent a lot of money on TV advertising over a million dollars, I believe at one point on a campaign. And they found the best way is word of mouth, as we all know with advertising, 
and with referrals from these 900 riding schools. So that made me feel a lot better when we got back and that's why we started the Discovery Centers. We don't have a million dollars for a TV campaign and we're in the, one of the biggest metro markets in the country. A million dollars would, wouldn't buy much here in the Baltimore, Washington metro market, you know, next to New York and, and all of that. So, um, and that's why we really promote our our neighborhood riding centers and do a lot of outreach with them and social media and promote their activities. Uh, we've been doing a lot of it virtually this year uh, because of COVID. And the governor just announced October, which we just passed through as October Horse Month. We had the Preakness in October this year. By the way, <laughs> you know, on Jeopardy the other night, Preakness was one of the answers to one of the questions. <laughs> Maryland Crab Cake <laughs> and the Preakness. So horses really are known here. That was Alec Trebek <laughs> in Jeopardy, one of his last appearances. But anyway, um, uh, so we really work hard on the, on the promotion of uh, and, and, and as much as we can afford and, and, and uh, you know, we go forward. And, but our goal is to bring new people in and then hopefully they have good experiences. And then a certain percentage will end up taking riding lessons. A certain percentage will buy horses, lease horses. A certain percentage will become go to the racetrack and, you know, um, uh, end up owning racehorses or training horses or working at the track, you know, and we have pony racing here. We have almost a hundred kids that participate in pony racing. A lot of those go on to become jockeys, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, well done. it's really, um, we're just a land of horse lovers here and our bench is deep with people that are passionate that love horses and really devote their lives to it. So it's a pleasure really to work with everyone. I think it's great that there is a Maryland horse industry, you know, that, that, that really focuses on all of this. And if people want to know more about all that you've talked about, how would they do that? And do you have any last words you'd like to say before we sign off? <laughs> they can easily go. We have a new industry website called MarylandHorse.com. And you can go to MarylandHorse.com and learn all of this information. We have videos and YouTube videos and all of this information, links to all of, all of the information that I've just said. Um, uh, so MarylandHorse.com is the place to go and, uh, and learn about all of this. And, um, you know, we're excited. We have the new five-star event at Fair Hill. Our Governor has put a lot of money. We're redoing Pimlico and Laurel racetracks. Uh, Fair Hill just had a substantial facelift, about $20 million up there. So, uh, and we're returning all of that. State tourism is now seeing the benefit and we're being part of all of their campaigns, promotional campaigns this year. They want horses to be a part of pretty much everything they do. They've opened up a section of the Maryland tourism website. It's visitmaryland.org which now is a whole section of uh, travel collections where you can go see horses and, and so forth. So everyone's jumping on board and it's really exciting. I think what's exciting too is that people can watch this film Racing the Time and really get a feel about everything you've talked about. So I wanna thank you for being a part of this year's Equus Film and Arts Fest. And for- Well, you all do an amazing job. <laughs> An amazing well, job, and we love we we just love you and Lisa to death. I mean, it's just great, and we you know we've had some of the traveling tours here uh, over the years, and uh, three or four different years, and uh, uh, good turnout and and so forth. So it's been excellent, excellent relationship. Well, well thank you again, Ross Petticourt. <laughs> thank you, Diane. <laughs>